Hey there, want to hear about how I deal with the ever-changing things that happens with the health of my body? Want to hear about it? Well, here you go. Stay tuned. Hello, my loves. Kelly here, and welcome to another interesting slice of my world. So, sometimes I show up, sometimes I don't. And I don't like that, I hate being inconsistent. However, I also have to bend to the whims of my body. So there are days when recording isn't gonna happen, moving about really isn't gonna happen. Um, so let me tell you guys kind of how I deal with the nonsense and shenanigans that happen with my body. So imagine this, you fine as wine, you healthy, you ain't got no problems. Then all of a sudden you start dropping weight like crazy, but you're not doing anything different. You don't understand what's happening. And you are in so much pain that literally you are not sleeping for days on end, which is a different brand of torture. And here's the worst part. Nobody knows what's wrong with you. You're going through all kinds of drama, trauma and nobody knows what's wrong with you so finally when they do figure out what's wrong with you you've been healthy all your life you've not had to take medication and when you did it was for something like maybe a headache and you would take it and the headache would be gone it would alleviate whatever that pain was so when your doctor says hey we know what's wrong with you we're going to send you medication you're like, yay, the pain is going to stop. The sleepless nights are going to stop. I'm going to get better. Nope, <laughs> that is not what happens. So with lupus medications, often what they do is they suppress or hold down your immune system. So what they're supposed to do is stop your body from further attacking the organs, tissues, uh, skin, whatever it is that it has deemed as the enemy. It's supposed to be the guy breaking up the fight. Well, that's not what happens either. So in my case, when all of this nonsense first started, I kept getting pericarditis, which is where the lining around your heart keeps swelling up. It happened to me like four or five times. You seriously think you're having a heart attack at least the first time after you've done this after you've been there done that for a while you kind of get used to it you know what medication they're going to give you you know how it feels you can almost self-diagnose when it's happened to you a million times so it's very discouraging when you realize that the person that's supposed to be in the middle breaking up the fight is not very effective at breaking up the fight so even while taking this mediator drug, so to speak, my liver has swollen at least once. My lungs are impacted. I've never smoked a day in my life. Clearly, my hair was impacted because uh, the medication started making my hair fall out by the handful. I've got a, a video where I discuss when my hair came out. Um, my muscles are directly impacted, which is another reason why I drop weight and have a very difficult time keeping it. Walking has become uh, difficult, thus my little buddy here, I'm in the wheelchair. So this is what my life looks like. Oximeters, <laughs> blood pressure cuffs, constantly in contact with my ists. And when I say ists, I mean pulmonologist, gastroenterologist, rheumatologist, and there's a, actually more on my healthcare team. And it seems that every time I go to the doctor, something new has come up. So again, my mediator drug sucks. <laughs> and I have to deal with a new diagnosis or a new medication. Mentally, that's very difficult. So yesterday, I got a, yet another new diagnosis and I scared the crap 
out of both me and my assistant. So I'm standing in the kitchen showing him something. Y'all, even though I live in Merida and it gets hot here, I do not sweat. I am rarely ever actually really hot, especially enough to sweat. I might perspire a little bit where I shine, but I don't sweat. I'm standing in the kitchen and all of a sudden just start dripping. And I get a paper towel and I said to him, man, I'm sweating like a whore in church all of a sudden. Then I was like, oh, I gotta sit down. He grabbed me. I barely made it to the wheelchair before I passed out. I was done, slumped all over. And he brought me on the wheelchair back into the room, put me on the bed. I could barely, like, for five minutes I couldn't see. And it was really scary. And as it turns out, my blood pressure, or my, not my blood pressure, my heart rate dipped down. Your normal heart rate is supposed to be like 60. My nonsense was let like, between 43 and 25. It was just falling, falling, falling. And needless to say, that was quite scary because uh, bradycardia, which is what they call that, can cause heart attacks. Y'all, I was so scared. But mentally, at first, I didn't realize that that was what the issue was until I got my oximeter and contacted my, my doctor, one of my ifs. Can I tell you all that the way I cope, honestly, with the constant changes that occur is through art, arts and crafts. And I know that many of you have known, have learned that I've opened a business. My grand opening is this coming Thursday um, so that I could get rid of, <coughs> excuse me, so that I could get rid of the anger that I feel, the depression that comes with it, the anxiety that I'll be out and have a massive coughing fit at the most inappropriate time. Um, so arts and crafts really help me. And I know that some people may think it's bogus, but it's a way to achieve mindfulness. Not everybody can clear their mind where they're able to do meditation, but if you're locked into a task and you're enjoying that task, typically, your mind is only on that task and it isn't thinking about your healthcare declining, what your next medication may be, what your next issue may be, what your current issues are. You're just in that moment. The other way that I deal with um, my issues is humor. And for me, I've had people unfriend me, uh, tell me off, because my humor is what they call gallows humor. It's a little inappropriate at times, depending on the situation. Um, for example, I'll tell you about a friend of mine who was a personal trainer, and he had a client that started to have a stroke. So needless to say, all the CPR measures went into place, and you know, once the ambulance took his client and left, needless to say, he was very upset and it was a very upsetting situation, but I needed him to relax. I needed him to just breathe and then really deal with the situation and not be caught up in so much emotion. So I said to him, I'm not really sure why you are so upset. And he was like, what do you mean? I says, your book of business is about to grow because people are dying to get in here. And he literally laughed and he was like, you're the only person that could crack that joke that would make me laugh. And I was like, good, because that was the point. I said, do you feel better? And he was like, actually, I do. And he's like, let me just sit down and relax. And so that's the kind of humor that I have, and not everybody can take it, and I get that. But that's how I cope. I cope with humor. If you guys have paid attention to my videos, like a lot of lupus warriors refer to not being able to sleep at night as pain insomnia. That sounds so morbid to me, y'all. I can't get with that, so I call it rock and roll nights. And people are like, rock and roll? I'm like, yeah, you in so much pain, all you can do is rock and roll. So I'm gonna make the joke, I'm gonna find the funny, uh, especially in my own situation, because I laugh to keep from crying, you've heard that, and sometimes I cry. That's another coping mechanism. I try not to do that often, 
because I'm not having a pity party over here and I'm not feeling sorry for myself. It is what it is and I got lupus for a reason and don't know what it is, but you all say I inspire you. Maybe my goal, maybe my point in this life is to show people who have crazy, crazy bodies that they can still get out and accomplish wonderful things. They can still get out and achieve their dreams. I mean, since I've had lupus, I got diagnosed August, of, no, February 2016. August of 2016, I had two fellas help me, because I'm not gonna tell you I was able to do it alone. I was ready to give up. Help me climb an active volcano in Nicaragua. So we can do this thing, y'all. Just because we got stupid bodies does not mean that we have to give up on our hopes and our dreams and that we can't do big things. So that pretty much is all I came to say. Um, I will see you guys soon. If you have not subscribed, why not? And if you wanna talk to me personally every day, um, join my Marco Polo group. I'll put the link below because I'm always delivering, um, telling y'all what's going on with me, number one, and then trying to give you all a positive message to start your day. And, you know, I want to hear from you. So follow the link below and make sure you hit the subscribe button. And I will see you guys next time. Ciao.